In the last lesson, we talked about the active record pattern and covered basics of the Laravel Eloquent. In this lesson, we're going to do a bit of refactoring and also learn how we can hook into some of the events that get triggered by Eloquent. If you've been following this series, then you should already be familiar with our mini project that we've been tinkering with throughout the series. If not, don't worry about it, we're going to do a quick review. We have the entry point to our application within the public index.php. So all requests go through this public index.php. This is where we instantiate our router. That's where we are registering the routes. We're instantiating our app. We're calling the boot method and then run. We are using a custom container and router implementations that we also implemented within this series. Within the app class, we see that we have a static DB property here, along with the static DB method that returns the DB instance. And if we scroll down where we're booting the application, we see that this is where we're creating that DB instance. The DB class itself is nothing more than just a wrapper around the doctrine DBAL. And before we refactored it to use Doctrine DBAL, it was just a wrapper around PDO. So our goal basically is to refactor this so that instead of Doctrine DBAL, we use Eloquent. As a bonus, we'll also refactor to use the Laravel's container instead of using our own custom container implementation, because why not? Laravel's container has more and better features. Now note that this refactor is actually going to be pretty simple because we already did the eloquent setup in the last lesson. So we need to basically copy all of this and paste it somewhere within our app.php. Now I'm going to get rid of this section from here and maybe we can call some kind of method called init db. Let's also get rid of this static method here and we'll drop the static property. Now we'll create a new method here called init db, which will accept the config as an argument and we'll paste this code in here. Now I'm going to take this out since this will be taken from the argument. We'll replace this with config. We need to import the capsule manager. So let's import the manager and then we'll simply alias this to capsule. Let's also import the dispatcher. And for the container, we're not going to pass anything in just yet because if we open the dispatcher, we see that it expects a container contract instance. And if it's not given, it simply instantiates a new container. Once we're going to refactor to use Laravel's container, we'll pass that Laravel's container instance within it. For now, we can just leave it empty. All right, the other thing that we need to do is we can actually get rid of this .env part. We don't really need it. And then within the initDB method call, we need to pass in the config. Now we do need to adjust our config DB section. So if we open the config here, and we paste in whatever I copied before the params from the eloquent section, we do need to adjust this to match this. So we're going to take this and put it here. We'll replace the driver and then we need to replace the DB name with database and user with username. Everything else is the same. So we can get rid of that and we should be good to go. Now we're pretty much done. There are a couple more things that we need to do. As you might remember, we also have a base model class that uses the DB instance to set the DB property. And then this DB property was used within the models that were extending this base model. Now we no longer need this base model because we are no longer using the PDO directly and we no longer have access to this DB connection. Instead, we're going to be using Eloquence. So we don't really need this base model. So what I'm going to do is that I'm actually going to delete this base model and then I'm actually going to delete this DB class as well because we're no longer using this DB class so let's get rid of that and the last thing that we need to change is that within the invoice controller we are using the old invoice model where we had the old method which was returning all paid invoices now this of course is not going to work because we got rid of the old invoice model and instead now we have eloquent invoice model from the last lesson so there are a couple of ways we can fix this one way is to use the base query builder from the capsules manager and build our query and fetch the invoices based on the status. And another way is to use the eloquent invoice model and build the query on it. So we'll call the query method statically on the invoice model. Then we'll do where status is equals to invoice status paid. Then we need to fetch the results. So we'll call get 
and we're going to cast everything to array the reason we're going to do that is because i don't want to modify the invoices index view which uses arrays to access the data so if we open that view we see that it expects invoices to be arrays now of course we could replace this to expect object instead but i don't want to do that here so that's why we're doing two array right here so this should be good enough we can actually test this let's open the browser and visit that url and sure enough, we see only the paid invoices displayed on the screen. This was pretty easy, right? We are now using Eloquent instead of Doctrine or PDO directly. Now, of course, we could move this query into a service class or into a repository to keep our controllers thin, but that's out of the scope of this lesson. Now, let's see how we can use Laravel's container instead of our custom one. So if we go to index.php, we are instantiating our custom container here. What if instead of custom container, we were to instantiate Laravel's container? Let's see if that would work. So we'll replace it with illuminate container. Let's get rid of our custom container import. Let's import this. And we need to fix our router class and the app class because these classes expect our custom container here instead of Laravel's container. So we'll replace this container with Laravel's container and let's open the app.php and within here we also need to replace this container with Laravel's container. Let's actually delete the custom container class from here. We're going to import this and let's import within the router as well. The other thing that we need to adjust is that within the app class, if we scroll down, we are calling this set method that existed on our custom container. But on Laravel, it's called bind. We could actually pass this container now because the container is eloquent container. We don't need dispatcher to create a new container. So let's test this out now. This technically should work. Let's open the browser, refresh the page, and everything is still working. Now this already means that the container is working properly because within our router, we're using the container to resolve the class right here. But let's do one more test so that we can test that binding is working. So we're going to inject mailer interface in invoice controller so that we can test this. We're going to inject the mailer interface here and let's var dump mailer. Let's open the browser, refresh the page, and sure enough, it is an instance of custom mailer. So we have successfully replaced our custom container with Laravel's container. Now let's talk a little bit about events. If you remember from the Doctrine ORM lesson, we were hooking into one of its lifecycle events to set the created at date prior to the persist operation. Now with Eloquent, we don't really need to set the created at date explicitly because if it's a timestamp, Eloquent automatically handles that for us. The invoice model also has another date column called due date and in our example from the last lesson we were setting that to 10 days in future manually. Why don't we hook into some event that Eloquent triggers and have the due date automatically be set to 10 days in future if it's not explicitly set. Let's open the documentation, scroll down a little bit and click on events and see what events we can hook into. As you can see, these are the events that we could hook into. We have retrieved, creating, created, updating, updated, saving, saved, deleting, deleted, and so on. The event we want to hook into is the creating event because that gets triggered before model is created. There are a few ways we can listen on these events. One way is to define closure-based listeners within the model itself, and that's what we're going to do in this lesson. So let's open the invoice model class and we're going to override the booted method. And within here, we can call the event specific method to hook into statically. So we can do static creating, we'll pass the closure here and the closure receives the model instance as an argument. So it receives invoice as an argument. And within this closure, we can do whatever we want to do right before the invoice model is created. So we want to set 10 days in future. Now there is one problem here because with this we are saying to always set the due date to 10 days in future. But what if we wanted to customize this and set it to something else? This would essentially always overwrite that. So what we want to do instead is that we want to only set the due date to 10 days in future if it hasn't been explicitly set. So it's kind of like a default value. 
The way we can do that is by checking the dirty or clean state of the due date property. So we can do something like if due date is clean, then set the due date. And this is it. This should actually work. Let's test this out to make sure that it works. So let's go to the controller and create a new method here called create. And we'll set a get route for this to be invoices new. And we're just going to hard code the values here instead of taking the input from the user just for the demonstration purposes. That's why I'm using the get request instead of the post request. In a real application, you would do a post request and you would take the information from the user from some kind of form. So we're going to create a new invoice here and we'll set the invoice number to something like five invoice amount 20 invoice status to pending. Let's call the save method and let's echo out the invoice ID as well as the due date. Let's open the browser, visit invoices new and sure enough the due date was automatically set 10 days in the future. Now let's test the other case where we explicitly set the due date to something else. Let's set it to tomorrow instead. Let's go back to the browser, refresh the page and sure enough, the due date now is set to April 30th, which is tomorrow, instead of adding 10 days to the current date. All right, so I think this is it for this video. I just wanted to make a quick refactor video and replace the doctrine with eloquent as an example. This way you know a little bit of both doctrine and eloquent and you also know the difference between the data mapper and active record and you've seen both in action. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. It really helps the algorithm to recommend my videos to more developers and it helps the channel grow in general. Thanks again and as always, I'll see you next time.